Hello, and welcome to Book 2, Chapter 19 of You Should Be Reading. Now, today I'm doing something a little different. I'm not going to be talking about any particular book. Uh, today I want to talk to you all about books, audiobooks, and ebooks. Because they are the three, the three big ones out there in terms of actual physical media that books are translated into and are available in these formats. And now me, I don't know if you've noticed, but I tend to be more on the book side. I'm going to talk about that first and then get into each one. Kind of talking about the pros and the cons of each, at least as I see things. Now, for me, I love the, the tactile sensation of holding a book in my hands, flipping through the pages, I'm a big fan of the smell of paper and books. You get enough books together, you get that. It's kind of a musty smell in a way, but, but not really, especially in libraries. I just love the smell of books. It's, it's a thing of mine. But books are the, the original, the original source for the media that I love so much. And they have been around for centuries and they will probably continue to be around for centuries to come. Why is that? Because one of the things about a book, as opposed to a audiobook or a ebook, is that the batteries never run out on a book. You don't need them. It's simply there. It exists in its entirety in that one small or maybe a little larger in a hardcover copy. Now granted, the uh, cons of books are that you get enough of them, like I have, and it's very, very heavy. Uh, moving day is not something I ever look forward to, because that's a lot of books. You pack them into boxes, and they are heavy to cart around, so there's cons to books as well. You can never really take too many of them out at one time to bring with you on a trip, because weight, uh, size, that sort of thing. But to me, books are, there's something, something almost intangible about them to me, and I really do like them. Now, audiobooks are something else. Audiobooks are, uh, they're either, they used to be on cassette tape, now they're on CDs. Uh, I believe you might be able to even get some of them on maybe DVDs or, or the high, high quality CDs that hold a lot of, uh, a lot of data. Uh, I know that there's also Audible is a thing where you can download digital copies of audiobooks which is fantastic. I love the idea. Putting a whole slew of audiobooks onto your iPod to take with you on a vacation, an amazing idea. Again, it, they do need batteries. And I, while I do like the concept of audiobooks, of having them read to you, in a way it kind of it kind of adds to the imagination in a way when you're hearing it from certain people's the way they read them from their perspective of things uh, it's even more adding to the imagination because I know they're out there and I have to get them for Roger Zelazny's Chronicles of Amber there are both sets of books um, the latter the Merlin saga is apparently narrated by Will Wheaton and they have other voice actors as well doing this narration so that then there's sound effects. And that just adds to the imagination. I haven't experienced that myself yet, but I can just imagine how amazingly that sort of thing would add to it, would make the experience so much more dynamic. And I'm all for that. That's fantastic. <clears throat> but there's also something to be said for having just the book in your hands, reading it, and coming up with these voices, coming up with these sound effects in your own mind to, to really let your imagination run wild with it. There's something to be said for that as well. Now, on the other hand, you have ebooks. Ebooks are very much like normal books, except they're completely digital. You have them on a digital media, whether you have them on a tablet, whether you have them on an e-reader or your phone. Uh, it doesn't matter how you want to access them. I think you can even access them on your computer if you've got the proper reader. And I'm all for that, because that means you can own they're a lot cheaper, I'll give it that, 
ebooks are cheaper than real books because there's no physical media to store it in. It's all digital and it usually costs a fraction of the price. Whereas one of my paperback novels there can cost anywhere from eight to nine dollars to thirteen to fourteen, depending on the size, sometimes even close to twenty bucks, depending on the size of it, for one book. Whereas you buy the digital version of this and it would cost maybe one dollar, maybe up to five, depending on the size. Again, if you don't have a lot of money, uh, you have access to an e-reader or a way to read them, and you want to get e-books, go for it. It's just the same. And thanks to technology, with backlit screens and the way things are doing to help reduce eye strain, it makes it so much easier to read for long periods off of a digital device. Trying to read off of something that wasn't optimized for it, back in the day, I remember books on the Game Boy that were frankly horrible to try and read especially with the uh, attachment light that you snap onto it that would put a, a, a thing around your, your Game Boy window and shine lights down onto it because it wasn't backlit back when I had one yeah it's, things are so much better technology is amazing these days so yes I'm not saying any one of these three medium are in any ways better or worse than the others because it's all books whether it's the physical media that you read yourself whether it's the audio media that is being read to you because maybe maybe you can't maybe for example one of the things that I didn't touch on it and I should have when I first started talking about audiobooks but audiobooks I find amazing simply for the people that can't see and don't have access to a book they want to read in Braille. An audiobook is perfect. It lets them experience the wonder of a story that's out there without having to go and and find it, especially because audiobooks these days are so much more prevalent than they were. I imagine a lot of books that are out there in Braille that are amazing, but perhaps you can't find it. Audiobooks are a wonderful alter alternative for that, and that is amazing. That just makes me smile so much to know that anybody, literally anybody, can enjoy a story that has been put out there. So, yes, that's really kind of all I wanted to talk about today, about those particular genres and what the pros and the cons might or might not be as I see them but yes uh, it doesn't matter what you're reading just remember that this week you should be reading something anything or have it read to you it doesn't matter but read please read because it's there is no greater joy in the world, I find, than having an amazing story being told to you in one form or another. To experience an amazing story that somebody has poured their heart and soul out into. It is simply, I, I, as I said, I find there's no greater joy to it. It is an, a wonderful, wonderful thing to start a story, to go through a story, and to reach an end of a story. So however you want to do that, you want to read it yourself, paper in your hands, turning the pages, hearing that rustle, you want to have it read to you, just straight out read. Sometimes you can even get the author themselves who wrote it reading the story, and that is amazing, because then that is as close to the, the horse's own mouth so to speak. Uh, so whether you have that being read to you that way, whether it's a full-on voice acted with sound effects, uh, story laid out for you in audio drama file style, kind of like the old BBC Doctor Who's, just get it done. An ebook reader, great tools, amazing. So yes, uh, for this week, that's all I've got to say, really. So check it out. And uh, 
I'll see you next week.